Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my favourite type of video, the double unboxing. It should have been a triple unboxing, but I have zero patience, so it's only a double. As I will explain, these are my pickups from the AliExpress anniversary sale at the back end of March, so about five weeks ago now. And I ordered three watches. Two of them have arrived, but one of them is still strapped to the underside of a pigeon halfway across the South China Sea. But I cannot wait to get into the other two, so so that one will appear in a future video. What did I order? Well, as you know, I'm a big fan of the Seagull 1963 chronograph, but I haven't reviewed any other Seagulls on the channel. I thought that was a bit of a miss, so I did indeed order the Ocean Star, that's the one that's missing today, and the Tank Commander, the 99, which I will peel and reveal in just a minute or two. But really, it's the other watch that I have been desperate to get a hold of. I know I'm keen on a watch when I am tracking it across the planet. This one should have been delivered by FedEx on Wednesday, but instead they gave it to TNT on Thursday, who delivered it to the Ashfield News Agency on Friday. I don't even live in Ashfield, but I picked it up this morning and I'm keen to get into the box. Now, cheap Chinese tour beyonds are nothing new to this channel. I have looked at a couple in the past and indeed I have given them away in the past, which shows you just how cheap they are these days. But this is the first one that I paid for with my own money. And from the other reviews that I've seen on YouTube, the dial on it looks pretty spectacular. So I'm desperate to get it out of its packaging and get it on the wrist. So let's get on with it. However, I am going to delay my gratification for five more minutes. I'm going to open the Tourbillon second. I'm going to open the Seagull Type 99 Tank Commander first. I assume there's a second strap in there because I've never seen a watch where they supplied the strap not attached to the watch head. Now, this is not the first time that I have reviewed an original watch after I have reviewed a homage of said original watch. However, it is definitely the first time I have reviewed a Chinese watch after having reviewed a homage of said Chinese watch. I looked at a Bure a couple of months ago, which was a homage of the Tank Commander 99. Now, I haven't done a huge amount of research on this one yet. I will, obviously, for the full review. They've been making it for at least five years, and it is a reissue of a watch that they made back in the 1960s for their army. I'm guessing if it is to do with tanks, I believe there's a picture of a tank on the back. So that's it, a big, chunky, original design Chinese field watch. I mean, I never read the instructions anyway, but today I feel pretty comfortable with that decision. So this is a proper Seagull, C-Gull. I made a long video about the Seagull 1963 this time last year. I'll leave a link up there in the top corner of the screen if you want to watch that. As to whether they were fakes or real or did it make any difference and what the kind of history of the watch was. So C-Gull as distinct from Seagull. These genuinely come out of the Seagull factory. QR code on the back is a giveaway of that, as is the price. This one was over $300, just under $350 from the Trendy Men's Watch Store on Ali. I'll leave a link to this one and the Tour Beyond in the description of the video. Okay, let's peel off some stickers. Just one bit of plastic, but it took me an inordinate amount of time to get it off. There is a little bit on the buckle and tang and a tag there. I'll get rid of those as well. Oh, and it looks like that one has removed itself. Let's put it back on and pretend that it didn't happen. There we are, peeled and revealed. So good news, as you can see by the second hand, I haven't got a dud that started to move when I was trying and failing to take the plastic off. Let me unscrew the crown, give it a bit of a whine. I believe this is a, obviously a Seagull in-house ST25 something something. I'll do a bit more research for the video. Now, do we have a ghost date position? Nope, straight on to hacking and handset. Let me adjust it to the watch reviewer's favorite time of day. It is, of course, always 10 past 10 in Watchland. I must say it's big, but it is a good looking big watch. Now, green drab, you know, how good looking can green drab be? But it's a nice shade of green. Those are applied numerals. Nice brushing on those big, big sword hands. They have, however, seemingly changed it. I have been watching a number of reviews and reading a number of written critiques about this watch in anticipation of it arriving. I was expecting to see a Type 99 tank on the back rather than that still quite attractive star and shield. I was also expecting to see some text about automatic and since 1964, because like I said, this is a reissue of a watch from the 60s. Instead, 
there's a kind of golden bullet there. Again, all very nicely done, nicely finished. Yeah, that plaque though, I definitely was expecting as well. Obviously, no idea what it says, but I will have a look at that for the full review video. Now, it's a big boy, 44 mil in diameter, 13 mil thick and 50 something lug to lug. One thing I did note though, 24 millimeter lug width. So just as well, this strap looks like being a good one, kind of canvas and calf with reinforced holes because I don't have any other 24 millimeter lug width straps. Let's get this one on wrist, see what it looks like on me. It looks, shall we say, legible. It is a big boy, but you're only gonna need one glance at this one, aren't you? Thanks to a huge dial, massive hands, and those huge Arabic numerals as well. That strap is stiff as a board, though. That'll take some breaking in, and it's really, really thick. That's probably why it is stiff as a board, but Seagull branded and reinforced, so yeah, all looks like a reasonable quality package for the 300 odd dollars that they are charging for it. All right, that'll do for this one. I'm itching to get into that tourbillon. Let's move on. All right, here it is, the Aesop tourbillon. If the other strap is anything like that one, I would rather they just given us one decent one rather than two rubbish ones. Did you see those thumbnails I popped up earlier on? $900 to be on, $500 to be on. This was less than $300. I think the price has gone back up since the sale period, but definitely one of the cheapest I've seen and by no means the worst looking one either. Let's see if it's as good in reality as it looks in the pictures and the video on their sales page. Now, one thing I have seen elsewhere, let's see what this says. Hang on, let's have a look at this before we have a look at the watch. Yeah. Check this out. Dear sir, madam, thank you for purchasing our tourbillon. This is one of the main concerns, one of the main reasons against buying a cheap Chinese tourbillon is what happens if it goes wrong? Well, this is what happens if it goes wrong. $25 maintenance of the movement. However, replace the movement current price. Is that like a lobster market price or is that current price of the whole watch? That's not bad actually for repair lists. I mean, I wouldn't be replacing the belts for $30. Dial 45, that is okay. Watch case 75. Yeah, anyway, look, that's nice to see. You don't often get that from AliExpress. Apparently, these are kind of made to order as well. There's not just a thousand of them sitting in boxes ready to go. So that gives me some assurance that, well, at least there is a bit of backup if the Tour Beyond movement does go wrong. Put it that way. But let's get into the watch. Let's remove some of this packaging. Oh, they've packaged it, the watch upside down. Let's move it out. Get rid of the box. Yeah, looks very, very interesting. Aventurine or something similar to it anyway. Kind of whole solar system there. Obviously tourbillon movement and yes, another ropey full croc strap just in a different color than the brown one that was hanging loose beforehand. Let's peel off some stickers and get up close and personal with this thing. Yeah, so that strap is rotten and the butterfly clasp isn't even branded. There's a few pictures of these on the AliExpress listing with, you know, great watch, better than expected, and all of them, every single person has junked the strap. I will be doing the same, I think, in short order. Let's peel off this big bit of plastic then. Oh, check that out. Yeah, that is a lot of fun. I don't own anything like this, and the reason I picked this one was because it seemed pretty wearable. I've had much, much bigger kind of 44, 45 tourbillons that were far too thick, really, for everyday use. This, I think, is a 42, 42 and a half with 22 lugs, and it looks nice and slim as well. Well, let's fire it up, and there it goes. Look at that. Manual wind, obviously. Bit of decoration on the back there. Is there another sticker? Yep, there's another sticker. That's not too bad. I mean, all of this kind of Chinese detailing looks better from a bit of a distance. Let's put it that way, but hey, that is quite pretty, isn't it? All right, let's pop it on wrist and see how it wears. Yeah, it actually wears quite nicely. Quite a long lug to lug, but it gets away with it because it is slim, it is flat. But that strap is junk. It really is one of the worst I've seen on anything. It's not going to last the night. It might not even last the video. Yeah, congratulations, Aesop. This is only the second time that a watch has not made it to the end of the unboxing on its original band. 
the last time was a Vostok Say No More. Mesh, what are we thinking, Mesh? I've just no idea what to do with this thing. I've never had a blue Aventurine Dial Tourbillon before. Leave me a comment, let me know what strap you think might suit it. Maybe I should find a dark blue or even a kind of pale blue to kind of offset it. It's not about the strap though, which is just as well. It's about the head of the watch and it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, it's a really interesting look, isn't it? That kind of solar system and all those sparkles. Who knew one of the watches I'd be looking most forward to in 2021 would be a cheap Chinese tourbillon with an Aventurine dial. So there you have it, two very different watches from the same source. Have your AliExpress anniversary sale pieces arrived yet or are you still waiting on the pigeons? Thanks for watching. I will see you all in a future video.